In this second of a multi-part series on eye retouching, we're going to take care of hair going through the eye and redness within the eye. Hi there, Michael Volshinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Vibrant Shot and also at vibrantshot.com. So in this second of a multi-part series on eye retouching, we're going to look at the common problem of uh, hair going through the eyes as well as fixing redness and veins within the eye. So let's just go ahead and zoom in to around 200% again. And as we can see, we have uh, a couple of hairs going through the eye here. Now there's essentially two different ways that you can deal with it. Um, the first way I'll show you has its limitations, but can sometimes work depending on the situation. For the most part, using a clone stamp tool on this is pretty painful because you often end up with um, the wrong color applying through here because the tonality within the eye changes a lot. And if you're even slightly off on your shade of white, uh, it looks absolutely terrible. So generally what I'll try and do is use the healing brush now before we do that, I'm going to just duplicate my layer using Command or Control J. And we're just going to sample, let's say from the bottom here, as close as we can to the actual hair. And just kind of going through and trying to get rid of it. Now that generally works okay here. Well, where you'll actually see it fail is any areas where there's a transition point. So if I actually try and you know fix it up through here, you know as you can see, it's just not looking too good. We're already starting to get um, some bumps over here. So let's roll that back. Uh, another area where you'll, where you'll actually see problems is right in here. So if we actually try to fix that, we'll start getting some uh, of the incorrect colors kind of blending in through here. So far, not too bad, but again, uh, not ideal through here. And also if we actually try and do it through here, we'll actually start blending in from the top. So um, what I'll usually do is I'll use the healing brush to fix the issue um, within the actual whites of the eye and then when I have to deal with these detailed areas I'll use a different technique so I'm actually gonna roll all of this back and we're gonna stick to one technique to fix uh, both the actual uh, hair going through and also to fix the redness so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use our good old friend frequency separation which I've covered in a number of videos before so I'm just gonna quickly blast through this uh, just refer to any of those other videos if you don't understand what I'm doing so basically we're going to create two duplicates of our layer so hitting command j twice now in this case i already have one duplicate which i made at the beginning so i'm just going to reuse that we're going to go to our bottom layer here we're going to blur it using gaussian blur and i'm going to pick a radius of 10. and i'm just picking that radius because um you know it's starting to get rid of the hair you can't really see it at that radius uh, but it still provides a little bit of detail within the image so there's our blurred layer. Now we're going to activate our top layer. Let's just rename these while we're at it. We're going to call this one low. We're going to name this one high. And we're going to go into image, apply image. We're going to select our low layer, check off invert, select add as our blend mode, scale of two offset of zero. Uh, I'll have the um, 8-bit settings pop up somewhere over here. Uh, so these are actually 16-bit settings. If you're an 8-bit, use the settings I have that are going to show up over here. Click OK. And then what we're going to do is just group these together, hitting Command G. Let's go and change the blend mode here to linear light. And we're going to add a layer in between them. So just create a blank layer in between the two layers. So um, I do have an action for this. Obviously, I just use that um, to create it. I'll just show you how that would work. Um, if I was using the action, I'd have my main layer. I have the action that just creates the whole frequency separation step for me, and I'm ready to go. So definitely record an action for all those steps. It just obviously, as you can see, saves you a lot of time in doing so. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our high frequency layer, and we're going to select the healing brush. And we can use now we can actually use the healing brush or the clone stamp tool depending on where we are. So I'm basically going to just sample again from sort of this nearby area over here, and we're just going to go over it. So we've got the high frequency layer activated right now. And just sample a little bit from the bottom, a little bit from the top. Sample from various areas, because you don't actually have to worry about uh, whether the tonalities match, because we're only operating on the high frequency layer, which essentially just has the detail in it, which is that the hair would actually be something in the high frequency layer. 
Now what you'll notice, if we try and go through here, it will actually remove the high frequency information, but it still leaves some of this low frequency information. So we're gonna have to deal with that separately. So our, our goal here really is to just get rid of the main portion of the line, and we're gonna fix some of this lightness that we have here a little bit later. So again, just sample from close by at the top. See now in this case, again, it's not working too well, so we're actually gonna have to change tools for this area. Let's just deal with this area first here. And now we're just going to go back to our trusty clone stamp tool. And we're just going to deal with that using the clone stamp tool. So again, just sampling from various areas. Again, we've got this whole light issue over here, which we're going to take care of separately as well. Just getting rid of it from there. As you can see, the, cl the clone stamp tool just gives us the most control now. Now we can actually use it, whereas before we couldn't because it's going to sample the color for us as well, which we certainly don't want. There we are. Okay, so we've pretty much clone stamped that out. Um, there's a couple other areas that we can take care of here as well. And then through there okay so that takes care of most of it we still have some issues over here so we're actually going to select this layer that we created in between we're going to pick our brush tool at a fairly low flow rate of around five or six percent make it nice and small and just sample color and just paint the color in and we're going to do the same thing here And also you can just kind of check to see if there's any other issues right here. This could be a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to sample this in and just lighten that down a bit. So there we are. If we toggle that on and off, we can see that we got rid of that hair there. There's a little bit in here and it's really your call whether you want to remove that or not. If, if we back out to 100%, you really don't even notice that. So you don't have to deal with it. It's really up to you. So now that we got that taken care of, we're actually going to deal with this redness all in one shot as well. Uh, and essentially, we're just going to do the exact same thing on our high frequency layer. We're going to select the healing brush and we're just going to sample areas that don't have any veins. And we're just going to brush them out. And so it goes. So we can basically keep doing that until we remove everything. And it's still going to leave a little bit of redness in the eye. So I'm going to show you how to deal with that. Let's just get rid of some of these ones down here. All right. I think that's good enough for now. All right, so if we toggle on and off, we see that that's where we've come. And again, frequency separation is really nice for this because I don't really run into any areas where I've messed up my tonality. Uh, the tones stay consistent, but we're just taking care of some of that high frequency information that's there. So now the last thing I want to do um, is to take care of some of the reddening within the eye itself. So I'm going to actually go into my adjustment layers. I'm going to pick a hue saturation adjustment, and we're going to select reds. Uh, from our colors list here. So we're just going to pick from the drop down here, pick reds. Then you're going to take the saturation down to around minus uh, 40 or so and just take lightness up a little bit as well to let's say minus 20 or plus 20. Then I'm going to hit command or control I to invert that uh, mask and then we're going to pick our brush again, 
pick a flow rate of around 10%, make sure it's nice and soft, and just kind of brush in there. Especially anywhere there's redness where you don't want there to be redness, just brush that in. And now toggling that on and off, we're probably going to want to scale that back just a little bit. So let's take the opacity down to around 60 or so percent. And let's get back to 100% in zoom. Hold down the option key and I'm just going to toggle this on and off. So as we can see, that's where we've come. So that's how you get rid of redness and hair going through the eye. As you can see, it's fairly tedious. I mean, getting rid of the redness is a really simple process, but the hair is just kind of a tedious thing and obviously depends on where it is. If it was just one hair going through this part of the eye, it'd be relatively straightforward. But when it goes through uh, various parts of the iris, uh, it becomes a little bit trickier. So really easy technique is just to use frequency separation and while you're at it, take care of the redness all in one shot. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about actually brightening the eye and making it really pop. Uh, but until then, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel below for more updates and also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrant shot. See you next time.